Hi guys, look today I want to discuss with you uh, a system that we have inside us uh, that allows us and uh, to modulate our appetite, uh, our shape and our weight uh, and our energy in terms of metabolism um, and has done uh, this system uh, for hundreds and hundreds of years and as a consequence of this industrial diet that certainly crept into our lifestyle and that we've been exposed to from sort of 1970 onwards, we've really put a dent in this system. And it is this, in my fat stores that we all have, and even Skinny Canyon, runners still have lots of stored fat collectively around, them, around their body. But in subcutaneous fat, there's a hormone that is released. And that hormone, so the more fat that I, 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 I uh, retain, uh, the more hormone, leptin, goes up to my brain and it gives us an idea of what's the state of my shape and weight and whether I'm at my optimum healthiest shape and weight. Now, let's just say, uh, particularly over the Christmas period, I'm not exercising uh, anywhere near as much as I often would and my food choices uh, because I'm exposed to you know, poor food choices over that Christmas period, which is normal, including perhaps excessive alcohol. And let's say I gain weight. More leptin goes up to my brain, and it'll say, Brad, you are not at the weight you really should be. And it will do two things. It's going to increase my metabolism to say, get up and move. That's why some days you feel quite good and have a, an energetic sort of drive early in the morning to get rock and rolling, and other days you can be flat. So let's say I've gained weight, metabolism is going to kick in, and away I go. Fantastic. And the second reason is, uh, the second sort of role, I beg your pardon, of the brain um, um, uh, detecting that there's more leptin involved, is my appetite will start to depress. It's as simple as that. My kick in... Uh, um, uh, trigger of you've had enough will kick in earlier than perhaps it normally does. I do not need the same volume. Anyway, this system has worked wonderfully well. Alternatively, if I'm exercising too heavily and I start to get incredibly lean, which I've done over the years uh, and it's had uh, it left me with ill health, uh, the brain will check there's less leptin going up and they'll say, Brad, go and eat. Appetite. Boom. Through the roof. And hopefully, because my food choices are always fairly sound year-round, it's going to gravitate to foods that leave my hunger nice and satisfied over a long period of time, and also, and also uh, lead me to foods um, uh, 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 that, that keep my energy mentally and physically, again, quite balanced right throughout my working day. So le leptin is this uh, messenger which is in constant contact with my brain, modulating both appetite and metabolism to keep me at the shape and weight, which is my optimum you know, for my life, both from when I was 18, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60, and this system should kick in. And as we're going to skip an eye report in, 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 in some other blogs that we're going to load up, uh, there's something clearly that's blocking that leptin talking to my brain in so many Australians now who are gaining weight. Because obviously I would get asked the question, well hey, if I've got stacks of fat, that means there's gonna be stacks of leptin. Correct. That means there's stocks of leptin trying to talk to the brain to help me modulate uh, appetite and, uh, and energy, but it's getting blocked. And we now know that research has, has confirmed that certainly sugar, refined sugar, has played a huge role in that blocking. And again, that's what a lot of this program is about. Speak to you tomorrow.